Moin, hallo, servus, gouda. Welcome back. It's Mace, coming to you from Western Canada. We got another top 10 list of German films. Top 10 best German movies of all time from this portal. Movie lists are always interesting because they're essentially entirely subjective, but also kind of not. No, they're entirely subjective, basically, but there's a lot of different factors and variables that contribute to the list. So how popular was the film? How much marketing budget did it have? What year did it come out? Um, how well did it do internationally? How well did it do in Germany? How well uh, known are the filmmakers? How much push did they have? Did it gain word of mouth? Was it kind of artificially pushed to the top just from, you know, a huge amount of marketing budget? Are, are they kind of critical darlings? So like just movies that are very, very highly looked upon by critics. Um, are they audience darlings? Movies that are, you know, just audience favorites. Or are they just favorites of the person who made the list? Uh, I suspect we'll see Das Boot on this one. I still haven't watched that, by the way, but I need to. I suspect we'll see Run, Lola Run. Um, probably the, what's the Hitler one? Downfall. Uh, I can't think of, those are just the ones that I, I, I'm pretty sure all those ones were on the last top 10 list that we did a few months back. And, uh, from what I remember, a masterpiece like Metropolis <laughs> is not listed, which is kind of crazy. Like, right. Metropolis is so insane and and masterful i know it it's just so ahead of its time and what year did it come out 1927 uh interesting that it's not on these lists but they're not really made for film or cinephiles they're more made for a general more general audience i would suppose all right let's get into it In this video, we will tell you the best German movies of all time. Daniel Brühl. I like that actor though. Before beginning the countdown, we request... The Educators. The Educators. Okay, yeah, this was also on that last list. Three activists cobble together a kidnapping plot after they encounter a businessman in his home. Run Lola Run. Lola has 20 minutes to bring 100,000 Deutschmarks to her boyfriend or he robs his store. If the money is not returned, there will be consequences. You know, I've seen that film. I can't remember it all that well. I remember it, you know, it definitely has that kind of frenetic pace and kinetic kind of camera movements. Very, you know, the camera's following characters around while they're running and going up stairs and it's kind of got this craziness to it. It's interesting. Uh, I remember the soundtrack's kind of cool, but I, I would need to watch it again to to decide if I really liked it or not. <clears throat> we see three possible scenarios depending on Lola's encounters. Oh, that's cool. Forgot. Goodbye, Lenin. In 1990, to protect his fragile mother from a fatal shock after a long coma, a young man must keep her from learning that her beloved nation of East Germany, as she knew it has disappeared. Oh, it's an interesting plot. The White Ribbon Strange events happen in a small village in the north of Germany during the years before World War I, which seemed to be ritual punishment. I don't think that one was on the list. I'll have to look for that one. The White Ribbon. Hmm. Head on. With the intention to break free from the strict familiar restrictions, a suicidal young woman sets up a marriage of convenience with a 40-year-old addict, an act that will lead to an outburst of envious love. Huh. Downfall. There we go. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the meme how many times? Dozens? Hundreds? 
there's probably hundreds of of memes made of the the final scene when Hitler's kind of in the bunker and he's talking to all his subordinates, uh, all his all his guys in the room, <laughs> and he sends out like the the administrative staff and stuff, and they're listening in. It is a classic meme scene, but one of the best war movies ever made, on par with Saving Private Ryan and Das Boot, in every regard. I have to watch that. Trau Junge, the final secretary of Adolf Hitler, tells of the Nazi dictator's final days in his Berlin bunker at the end of World War II. Berlin. M. When the police in a German city are unable. Oh, they actually got a Fritz Lang movie on here. Bravo. But to catch a child murderer, other criminals join in the manhunt. M. M for manhunt. Metropolis. Oh. In a Maybe it was on the last list. I can't remember. Futuristic city sharply divided between I'm the working class there, and the city planners. The son of the city's mastermind falls in love with a working class prophet, who predicts the coming of a savior to mediate their differences. People must have just been blown away when they saw that back in the in the twenties. Das Boot. A German submarine patrols the Atlantic Ocean during World War II, manned by a crew that must contend with tense conflicts and long stretches of confined boredom. The Lives of Others In 1984, East Berlin, an agent of the secret police, conducting surveillance on a writer and his lover, finds himself becoming increasingly absorbed by their lives. If you enjoy this video... That sounds interesting. The lives of others. Uh, there's some definitely interesting concepts in there. Like submarine movies... I think Das Boot is probably... I think it's probably considered like the best submarine movie. I can't think of many other like... real true submarine movies. There's one that comes to mind, U571. There's like... What was it called? Red Crimson or the one with Sean Connery, Crimson Dawn, Crimson, Crimson Dawn. That's the the bad guys from Star Wars. Uh, Crimson Tide, I think that one's called. Uh, the Hunt for Red October, I think that's the one with. The Hunt for Red October is the one for, with Sean Connery where he plays a Russian, which is hilarious. Uh, I think that's a, a Jack, what's his name? the American Tom Clancy creation. Uh, yeah. There's some good movies there, though. I'm going to put them on the list. I'll certainly look for them on the streaming sites and stuff. Um, I'm thinking of starting to collect some physical media, just like at thrift shops and thrift shops. See if I can start a little mini DVD and Blu-ray collection. Uh, let me know in the comments, do any of you collect physical media? And what are your thoughts on physical versus digital media and kind of the way that that technology is trending and what it means from a social standpoint, a social standpoint, a pop culture standpoint and an ownership standpoint. All right, cool. See you all next time. Cheers. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen.